Everything we build will be swept away with time. Everything we build. Everything we build will be swept away with time. Whether we're building with paper mache or whether we're building with bricks, or whether we're building with stone, with enough time, it will be swept away. If it's not swept away, it'll be covered up. It will be both covered up and swept away, and then all of it will be consumed. But we can make things that last for a time, and we can make things that last for times, and we can make things that last for time and times and times. For a time of times, which is a long, long while, what we make will be swept away, but it will last for a while. How long? A day? A week? A month? A year? A decade? A century? Millennium, an era, an age, an eon. I'm not sure if I got those terms in the right order. What we make will be swept away. Matter, matter washing over form. Matter washing over form. Matter. Dynamic, washing over dynamic form. That's the one thing Plato doesn't get to. And that's why I'm so hard on Plato. It's actually not why I'm so hard on Plato. Plato was alright. History pumped him up too big. Pumped up that book, The Republic. The Republic, the book, The Republic, was supposed to be a test for the Academy. Right? Plato's Academy. So there's a prospect. There's someone clamoring to become part of the Academy. And they're given... What? Well, I think in the Greek it's actually the state. But it's been renomered as the Republic. I believe a more proper... I believe, well, I shouldn't say I believe, I, uh, I've heard it said that a more proper Greek um, uh, translation of that word is Plato, the state. Uh, and of course then, you know, nations, city-states, the whole idea of a state or a nation uh, was quite different. And I'm not so sure. They say that Rome was actually the... That Rome birthed republicanism. The republic. Uh, A lot of times these days, people say that uh, Aristotle came down on the side of democracy and that Plato came down on the side of a republic. These are both untrue. <laughs> um, Aristotle was cleverly hiding his truth, which anybody... See, that's the thing. If you... If you read Plato's Republic and believe it, then you also would believe that Aristotle was a proponent of democracy. Plato's Republic was a test. It was never meant to be this widespread big thing. It was a test. When you came to the academy, you know, I can't, I'm paraphrasing, I'm butchering the phrase, but supposedly... Above the academy, the phrase, you know, if you don't, ye who don't know geometry need not enter here. Like, if you don't know geometry, you're not allowed.
The whole thing is you're given Plato's Republic, supposing that you already, like, you can't, if you don't know geometry, you can't enter the academy, right? But if you're into geometry, the actual nuts and bolts, which is a compass and a ruler, not a compass and a square even, not CAD, not, not uh, Wolfram Mathematica, not all these tools and things that you can use to, not calculators, no. A straight edge and a compass. <laughs> a straight edge and a compass. That's it. All of math built off. Actually, the compass comes first, not the straight edge. We think the straight edge comes first, but it doesn't. The compass comes first. Because you can go like this. This is a more this is a more true circle than this is a plane. Yeah, got off in the weeds there, but I hate to say it. I hate to say it, but Aristotle was uh, a proponent of constitutional monarchism. In a in a sense, that's that's the best thing I can identify that Aristotle was actually into. And you might be saying, oh, so you're into Britain, and you're into white folk, and da-da-da-da-da. Except for the fact that you don't know what I know about Sejong the Great. The greatest threat to the world powers is something the world powers don't talk about, and only a few world powers have identified, deep beneath the underground. And that's the power of a unified Korea. Not a South Korea and a North Korea. A unified Korea. Why would a unified Korea, 75 million people, 80 million people today, why is that such a quarter, which is 10, 15 million less in population? Like Iran has 90 million people, and we think as Iran is a threat to the world. The greatest threat to every power system in the world today I shouldn't say the greatest the great uh, there's a lot of things tied for first place in time though in eternity there's one power system and he was born through Mary but anyway besides that um, the greatest threat to the power systems of the world today is a unified Korea why because of Sejong the Great. So when I say Aristotle was in favor of constitutional monarchy, what I also mean by that is that he was in favor of divinely inspired constitutional monarchies. Sejong the Great is not the only example but I use it because it's outside of the what? So we're talking about the history of Catholicism and if we're dragging, if we're talking about Catholicism and Christianity and Aristotle and Plato, well then of course we're talking about Aquinas and we're talking about Augustine and da 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 and so on and so forth. But, where's Sejong the Great fit in? Never mind. This is why you Catholic folk <laughs> need some people from the outside. Because there's shit you ain't talking about. You ain't talking about, uh, what, Mendel? Mendel, the guy who figured out genetics before the scientific Oxford people before the scientific Oxford people, home of atheist, home of, eh, not, eh. 
it's kind of like yeah. before the mathematics of the DNA structure and all that, there was Mendel in the Catholic Church man, who figured out genetics before the quote unquote geneticists all wrapped up in DNA figured out genetics. And what he did was based upon mathematics and observation and care and loving. That's one of the things like where, where we raised up uh, Darwin, which, well, we should have, but we suppressed Lamarck. And to be so dull, to be so like the 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 marriage of Lamarck and Darwin is pretty much reality. To discard Darwin, that, that's a fool's venture. Religious folk discard Darwin, while scientific folk cling Darwin tight. Yet, the religious folk and the scientific folk disregard Lamarck. When Mendel is the proof of Lamarck, what's that mean? It means that what we want actually shapes our evolution. What does that mean? It means that Mendel did some scientific shit. He used little pieces of paper to draw little squares on the... Like, how much does it cost to take a pencil and to draw a square on a piece of paper? How much does it cost to plant a seed in a piece of dirt and watch it grow? And then make a mark over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Pennies on the dollar. It's the same thing India is doing today. What? India sent a space probe, one of the most highly advanced pieces of science ever made, India sent to the south pole of the moon. They achieved what no great power ever has for only $75 million, which is a lot of money. Yeah, 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 could have, it could have, it could have give a lot of fat kids a bunch of donuts. Great. But what did they do? They did the impossible. They did... It was like 60 years ago, or 50 years ago, 40, 40, 50, 60 years ago, when all this other space shit was going on, it was more, they spent more money back then in U.S. dollars to do what they did. And India did today, 60 years later, after massive, 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 massive inflation. And for less money, pennies on the fucking dollar. India. On the very, <laughs> on the same day that Vivek Ramaswamy was in the first Republican presidential debate of 2023. So, to my mind, that was a big day for India worldwide. Indians worldwide. I'm sorry I'm using the wrong term. Please forgive me for my colloquialisms. Please forgive me for my colloquialisms. It's like white privilege, but also white... Like, I'm fucked because I grew up where I grew up and I, I'm i exposed to what I'm exposed to. We're all in a bubble... Yes, some of us have bigger bubbles, smaller bubbles, more distinct bubbles, but we're all we're all in these uh it's like when those magicians with their with the long balloons and they twist them up, right? It's still just one balloon even if it looks like a dog. It's not a dog. It's a balloon.
And when I say that Aristotle would have supported, to my mind, a divinely inspired constitutional monarchy. Right? So that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying Aristotle actually kind of supported. But not only, like, yes, democracy, republicanism, but like, we got to grapple with the fact that some leaders are actually divinely inspired. Not only divine, I hate the word divine, actually. Because it's division. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll uh, resolve that uh, flaw of diction slash grammar. I don't know how else to say it. I hate the word divination. I hate the word divine. Divine is kind of like the bad way of saying inspired. Inspired. Inspiration. Even if you're not religious, you know what inspiration is, right? Yeah. That's in spirit. The Trinity as one. The easiest way to think of the Trinity as one is that the two simple objects on a plane are a circle and a triangle. Circle? <laughs> a circle and a triangle. Right. They're the simplest planar objects in the same way that a tetrahedron and a sphere are the simplest three-dimensional objects. With a compass on a plane, you can line out a triangle. Of course, a hexagon too, but And then the thing with Plato is that Plato's Republic 